Hello, hello, and welcome to the Borealis Experience. I'm your host, Aurora, life coach and companion on this beautiful journey called life. First and foremost, I want to thank my latest supporter here. He bought me 25 coffees. Such a generous gesture. <laughs> and I sure couldn't sleep last night because I had so many coffees. I had them all at once. I've had an extremely stressful week last week. And to wake up to this message that somebody had bought me coffees and not only one or two, but 25. And the words that went with it, um, the words the email, the message said, Aurora, your voice is important. Thank you for all your work. Keep up the good work. Uh, was just so incredibly rewarding and so well-timed. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I don't know if you wanted me to mention your name here. I will keep you anonymous for now until I get a thumbs up. You're incredible. I'm grateful to have you here on this journey with me. Today I want to talk about how peace, patience, intimacy go out the window once we get stressed out. Uh, sometimes it's just one of those three things that we decide to engage in not engage in and sometimes it's all of the above and why is it important to talk about this and why is it important to know about how we deal with stress how our environment the people around us deal with stress that is what I want to talk about today if you are a new listener or if you just started out listening to my podcast recently, please know that we are on se season seven and this podcast is um, a buildup, so to say. It's a progress. So in season one, you get to know yourself. In season two, it's still getting to know yourself but also other people and then throughout season three and five I have interviews with very inspiring and empowering people who went through adversity and if you start from the beginning and get till season seven till season seven thirty four now I know that you will go through change and progress and growth uh, for the better. So I encourage you to go back if you haven't done that already. And maybe you want to do it over the winter months when it's dark and cold and you just want to spend time with me and reflect and connect with yourself and make the better decisions in life. I feel if we were all to feel better in our skin, um, we would be better people. And not with big effort. We'd be so awesome and inspiring others, supporting others. And wouldn't then our society be more resilient to stress and more authentic? I strongly believe so. That's why I'm here. That's why... I'm building my business, I'm growing my business for you. Right now I'm building a retreat center, a location for you to come and connect with me in person. I'm going to host men's circle, I'm going to host human circle. If there is demand, I'm going to host women's circle. But the workshops that I'm creating and hosting are always going to be welcoming for everybody because I see no point in hosting Women's Circle where we talk about how awful men are. That's my experience so far and I got out of this workshop feeling so weird and it's been three years ago. Um, COVID was in between, but now I feel the urge to connect and to create something 
where we can come together, where we can learn to understand each other, where we can make sense of our anger, our sadness, our depression, our frustration, and move forward as a whole, as a team, and not make it, um, not separating men and women. That makes absolutely no point for me. Um, no sense to me because we're together in this and we have to grow strong together and not separately. All right, I'm going to stop with my rant here. <laughs> I have a beautiful juicy pineapple and papaya sitting in front of me that I'm going to indulge in after I recorded this podcast for you. So I'm, I'm motivated to get into today's episode. Patience. Peace, intimacy go out the window when we get stressed out. At least this is how it is for me. Don't try to hug me or kiss me or uh, make love to me as my partner if I'm stressed out. I don't want this. And in the past, I was the kind of person who actually needed intimacy and sex to get stress out of my system. But for some weird reason, the older I get, the different it becomes. And I can deeply relate to people nowadays who say, wow, when I'm stressed out, sex intimacy is the very last thing I want to think about. So if you are that kind of person, keep listening. If you are the other kind of person, also keep listening because it might help you to understand your partner better. Um, when it comes to patience... Holy shit. Um, yeah, when shit goes sideways, when I have carefully prepared for something, anticipated, um, and stuff goes uh, different ways, especially not in the desired <laughs> directions, um, I become very short. Um, I'm kind of like a... A highly explosive bomb when things are not progressing in a project or when people when I feel people are you know careless not caring uh, when they don't have a sense of urgency for the matter then impatience is a big thing and of course with impatience and intimacy going out the window Peace is gone from the surface of Aurora's life. There is no peace. My brain is in constant problem-solving mode. And unless you want to problem-solve with me together and get this project done or address these issues right away, please stay out of my life. Um, that's the way I'm wired and I know it is not great. I will need in the future to keep my cool to communicate clearly and also trust a little more. Um, I also want to be more careful with who I ask for help or who I let get involved in my business. Um, I have to be, you know, more... Uh, specific and and more um, careful in casting the people that I want on board or the people that I do not want on board. So maybe you can relate to that. Maybe you are a business owner, an entrepreneur, um, a farmer, a rancher, uh, a hairdresser. Um, maybe you sell goods. Maybe you sell services. Maybe you work in retail. Maybe you are a parent organizing your family. You're not only entertaining and making sure that everything is in place and clean, but you also have to work on logistics. You also have to keep up with books. So wherever you come from, I feel there will be stressful situations where we need to remind ourselves on how important it is to keep our patience in check or our impatience, how to protect our peace and to allow intimacy in a steady way. 
I used to think that it's way easier to go through um, stressful times by myself. So as a single, I always thought, yeah, I can totally abuse, harass myself now through this situation. I don't have to be kind to anybody close by because I'm single. Um, I don't need to be intimidate, uh, intimate with myself. That can wait. And I'm just going to push through this. I'm going to basically bully myself through this stressful situation. But it's not okay to do that to ourselves. It's especially not okay to do that to other people. But it is also not okay to deprive yourself of peace and intimacy when you are single. And maybe you can relate to that. Maybe I am onto something right now. If you are a single, I want to ask you, how intimate are you with yourself? And how abusive do you get with yourself when life gets stressful? And especially if you are the kind of single who is kind of sad and frustrated to be single, you'd love to be in a relationship, but it's somehow not working out. You're not meeting people. The people you meet are boring or not a good match. I want to tell you something. If you keep abusing yourself like this, and if you don't allow time for relaxation and intimacy with yourself, and it doesn't mean masturbation, yeah? Um, sometimes it's quite the opposite. Sometimes we masturbate in a way that is very destructive and just, you know, a, a full-on release, but it's it has nothing to do with intimacy. Um, you will not make space for a person in your life, right? You will overwork yourself, you will be stressed out, you will be... Uh, not yeah you will be starved of intimacy and then once you meet a person you're kind of totally burned out even though you put on makeup or you put on your nicest clothes and drive your best car or your best motorcycle but you will be so starved on an intimate level that you can actually really intimidate other people by that and they will not want to connect with you on a deeper level because they feel overwhelmed and also they feel you would never make time for them because you're so extremely busy. So what I always advise my single people out there who come to my one-on-one -on -one coaching is that you have to start pretending that there is a person in your life already and this person is you and to not go over your limits and abuse yourself all the time but to take breaks to make a beautiful meal at the end of the night or for lunch to have a clean bed to have a clean house and to do it for yourself because all those excuses that we make that yeah uh, once I have a partner I am going to be intimate. Once I have a partner, I'm going to work less. But don't you see that you put a lot of pressure on that partner that is supposed to come into your life? And are you not worthy enough to live a good life already without a partner? I'm just asking you this. And I want you to be radically honest. If you burn yourself out now, if you are starved of intimacy it's going to be tough to invite a new person into your life because you may underwhelm them or overwhelm them with your needs if you don't meet them before you meet this person now how can we make sure to stay patient to keep and protect our peace and to be intimate with ourselves no matter if we have a partner or not there is beautiful meditation practices there is beautiful bath soaps right a relaxation bath is wonderful to treat yourself to a relaxation massage 
is wonderful. To massage yourself with a lotion or oil is incredibly healing and soothing. And you, for you guys out there who roll your eyes, be it girls or guys, try it out. Make it a little ritual after going into the shower to put some oil onto your skin and see what happens. Because our body is being abused most of the time at work. We're doing movements. We sit in positions that are not awesome. And yeah, we go exercise and move. But is it in a loving and caring way? And can you give that to yourself first and then invite other people to add to this so that you're not completely starved out when you meet your next partner? And also for you as a partner, if you have a spouse, if you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend, can you still take care of your physical needs first? And then once you want to connect on a deeper level with your partner, to invite them in and communicate with them what, what is, it is that you like, instead of having them doing all the work and cleaning after your um, non-commitment to self-care, so to say. So as a single, right now, you can start already and massage your feet, massage your legs, massage your arms. And if you have the extra money, Instead of spend, spending it on expensive TV, Netflix, Amazon, whatever is out there for entertainment, maybe try it out for six months or so to shift the money spending more into self-care and helping your nervous system to cool down. It will not only relax you from the stress that you have right now, but it will also um, make you more resilient for the future. And that's when you're not going to need to lose your shit over stuff that goes sideways because you will know, okay, it happens and I will catch myself and I will communicate clearly to others and everything will fall into place. So your investment in yourself in your stress management through a coach. And it doesn't have to be me. If there is a coach out there that you feel drawn to and know that they could really help you, then please reach out to them, contact them and ask them for help. Because what a coach can offer you is not just a short-term solution. It is a long-term solution that they, a good coach offers to you, which is life-changing And he provides you with tools that you will have for the rest of your life so that you can handle stressful situations more gracefully. So intimacy is extremely important. We are all sensual beings. I know there's women out there, maybe men out there who said they don't need that. It's not important. But I feel we need to talk about it more because we all need it. But sometimes we just don't want to allow it. It's a nuisance. It's, um, it's tough to open up your heart once you were bullying yourself for so long and abusing yourself through stressful situations. And then you also don't feel like connecting with your partner when you are in a relationship um, because you feel it's kind of dragging you into the opposite direction of where you want to go. And I'm here to remind you that this is wrong to do. You need to focus on staying relaxed and being able to be intimate with yourself. And you will not only serve yourself, but the people around you as well. When it comes to peace of mind then it is really important to find out how you can bring your nervous system down, not, you know, down low into depression, but to bring it back to center, so to say, and to be in a state of mind that is 
good to be in, to not need Netflix or, uh, you know, all kinds of entertainments, porn, to distract you, but to genuinely coming back to center. Again, meditation can help you. And if you go through my season one, two, three, and I think four, maybe as well, I have a couple meditations recorded for you and also for people who don't want to meditate. I was for the longest time a very restless person um, and I know what it feels like to sit down and to do nothing and I want to say or I got the feedback that I do it in a very entertaining and fun way to to help people calm their minds down. And if you have a question, if you want to If you need more, then don't hesitate to reach out to me and I'll, I'll send you a personal meditation if you wanted to, to help you come back to center, to your peace and to know that things will evolve, things will um, come back to normal soon, but you got to do your part in keeping your cool. And sometimes from childhood on, we are used to throwing tantrums and to become abusive with ourselves and with others and we think that's the only way we can rewire these neural pathways and learn new ways to handle stress in a more graceful way in a more productive way even where it still feels good and authentic but you will get more done so I think I'm going to leave you with that for now. Um, if there is any add-ons, additions, questions, please never hold back. Contact me on um, Aurora Eggert, Aurora Eggert Coaching, my two, um, uh, how do you say, profiles I have on Facebook. And um, I'm going to connect with you gladly. I'm going to leave you with that. You are appreciated. You are loved. If you listen to my podcast, I know you have a growth mindset. I know you're there to change for the better. You want to heal and move on and be your most authentic self. So I got so much respect for you. Take really good care of yourself. And I will be out there very soon again. Bye.